This is Polygon's first full carbon gravel bike called the Tambora, and it's got a lot going on, including a really interesting party trick that allows you to change up the geometry by way of flip chips at the front and rear axle. In this video, my take on the 2024 Polygon Tambora, including all the things that I like and the few things that I dislike about it. Okay, so right off the bat, the Tambora comes in four levels with all but the lowest level G4 featuring the same carbon frame. Of the carbon frame models, the prices start at $1,800 for the G5 and top out at $3,000 for the G8X, which is the model that I'm reviewing here. Now, as with all other Polygon bikes, the X in the model name denotes electronic shifting, and this Tambora G8X has a complete SRAM rival ETAP axis 12-speed system with a 40-tooth chainring up front and a 10 to 44-tooth cassette. Set. The brakes are also the rival hydraulic calipers with 160 millimeter rotors front and rear. Now the wheels are actually a very pleasant surprise as the G8X and the G7 both feature Novatech carbon wheels that are acclaimed 1400 grams for the pair. Now I didn't strip these wheels down completely to weigh them myself, but they do feel very light and they're definitely a surprise spec for a bike at this price point. Now the tires are the V rail in 40 millimeter width and while they aren't set up tubeless out of the box, the rims do come pre-taped and include tubeless valves so converting to tubeless is really straightforward. The cockpit is also size specific, which is a nice touch. Small and medium frames get a 90 millimeter stem with 420 millimeter wide handlebars, while large and extra large frames get a 100 millimeter stem and 440 millimeter handlebars. Now the stock handlebars have a subtle 16 degrees of flare and they actually do feel pretty good. The seat post is a skinny carbon 27.2 millimeter post, which actually adds a lot of compliance, especially since the sloped top tube allows a lot of the seat post to be exposed. And then the saddle is the brand name Cell Italium, which is also a little bit of a surprise spec. I'm used to seeing Polygon's house brand entity spec for most of their other bikes. Now the weight of the complete bike in size medium with no pedals comes in at 20.9 pounds or nine and a half kilograms, which is definitely respectable for a gravel bike again at this price point. Okay, so that's the spec. Let me talk through the geometry and the flip chips for a minute before I zoom out and talk about the ride experience as a whole. So the geometry in, we'll call it gravel mode, which is the more relaxed option, is where I've been spending most of my time with this bike. In this mode, however, the bike is still on the racier, more aggressive side with short 425 millimeter chainstays, a somewhat steep 71 and a half degree head tube angle corresponding to a 66.5 millimeter trail. It rides really quick and feels really fast on gravel, much more so than Polygon's more adventure oriented gravel bike, the Bend, but that's a comparison for another video. So then with the flip chips, you can go even more road biased with the geometry by sliding the rear axle in another 10 millimeters, shortening the chainstays to 450 15 millimeters, while the front flip chip actually does more than just slide the front axle backward. Now if you take a look, the chip is actually designed in such a way that the axle moves back and up, which actually changes several things in the geometry. So when you flip both chips from gravel mode to we'll call it all road mode, the wheelbase certainly gets a bit shorter from 1022 millimeters down to 1003 millimeters. But again, since the front flip chip moves the axle backward and slightly upward, the front of the bike actually dips downward a bit. The head tube along with the seat tube angle therefore get a touch steeper, which is expected for a more road centric geometry. However, at the same time, the bottom bracket actually ends up sitting a little bit lower as well. And the bottom bracket drop figure actually increases just a tiny bit, which is pretty insignificant, but typically on a more road inspired geometry, the bottom bracket drop tends to be smaller. Now for me personally, I prefer to ride the bike in gravel mode. Again, in this more relaxed configuration, it's still on the sportier side of the spectrum and it feels nice and quick. It should also be noted that switching between gravel and all road mode is not something you can do on the fly. In addition to actually flipping the flip chips, you also need to relocate the front and rear brake calipers to match the new wheel positions. Now for the front, this means flipping over the flat mount adapter and then reinstalling the caliper. And for the rear, you've actually got to install a different flat mount caliper altogether to get the brakes to line up. So in my opinion, using the flip chips to modify the geometry isn't something that you do on a regular basis necessarily. And if I had to bet, I would say that the majority of people who buy this bike 
will probably find the geometry that suits them best and then never touch the flip chips again, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I do like the idea of having some level of adjustability in the geometry. I just don't think it's something that the average owner will use all that frequently. Okay, so zooming out a little bit, I like how the bike rides a lot. Of the bikes in our garage, it's definitely on the speedier end of the range and it feels fast on the dirt. And one thing that I thought was a little bit odd was that given the sportier, racier flavor of the geometry, I was kind of surprised to see that the stack figure was a bit higher than typical at 593 millimeters for this size medium. Now for reference on the Blackheart, the stack is about 40 millimeters lower. And even on the Specialized Diverge, the stack is close to 20 millimeters lower than on this Tambora. Now I'm not actually complaining, I actually prefer a somewhat higher stack to begin with, but it's just something to note for potential buyers who are viewing the Tambora as a racy gravel bike. Despite most of the numbers being on the sportier side, the stack is a touch higher than expected, which may mean some tweaking of the stem and handlebars to get your preferred fit. Now, as far as the ride feel, the ride is solid, it's stiff, but it's not harsh. And for me, it actually strikes a very good balance and I'm pretty comfortable on this bike. Now, for me personally, I'd always rather sacrifice a little bit of stiffness for some added comfort. And the Tambora for me kind of nailed the ride feel. Now, I know what most people are probably already saying in the comments, so let's just address the elephant in the room the bike's appearance. It's certainly got a unique silhouette. In the rear, you've got really skinny seat stays and these really wide dropped chain stays, which from a design perspective, I kind of understand. You want the skinny seat stays for compliance and the wide chain stays have a really slim lateral profile, which allows greater freedom for wider tires in the congested bottom bracket area. So the rear triangle definitely catches the eye, but perhaps not as much as the huge head tube, which I think kind of takes cues from the specialized Tarmac SL8. Now, I don't know if this head tube is somehow aero optimized. I kind of doubt it. I'd probably wager that it's larger than usual size makes routing the internal cables a little bit easier. And then overall, it's just very angular. I mean, I suppose it is a polygon, so I guess I would expect it to have some exaggerated geometric elements, but from a distance, the bike certainly stands out. So one of the things that I'm not super fond of, well, in addition to the stack being slightly high for a bike in this category, I'd say that there are also just a couple of minor quirks that also have to do with, I guess, just the bike's identity. I mean, it's marketed as a do-it-all adventure gravel bike that can, quote, transform into a sleek and efficient road bike in seconds. Okay, so first of all, it can't transform in seconds. Even a skilled mechanic would need at least 10 minutes to remove the wheels, remove the brake calipers, and install the correct adapters, flip the flip chips, reinstall the wheels, and then realign the calipers. So it can be done pretty quick, sure, but again, it's not something that can be done on the fly, let alone in seconds. And then it's also claimed to be the quote, ultimate bike for any adventure, but there aren't any fork mounts for gear. It's got a ton of bosses for bottle cages and a frame bag for adventuring, but it also has electronic shifting and internally routed hydraulic brake cables, which would be just about impossible to service in the field. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the Tambora to me has no major flaws. It rides well, it's fast, it's light, and it's pretty comfortable. It's just, I feel like it's trying to be more than it is. Now to me, once you strip away the eccentric frame design and the novelty of the flip chips, you're basically left with a pretty average carbon gravel bike suited for most average cyclists. And I actually don't think that that's a bad thing. I just don't think that it needs to try and claim to be more than what it is. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is the price. In mid 2024, the complete bike is available for $2,800, which believe it or not is incredible value for a bike of this spec. Now, truthfully, if you try and find anything else on the market with full carbon frame, carbon fork, carbon seat post and carbon wheels with electronic shifting and hydraulic brakes, you're easily looking at a bike that costs $3,500 minimum, likely more. Now, I honestly believe that Polygon's value proposition is the value per dollar. And I don't think they need to go to such extremes to try and stand out from the rest of the market is I guess my biggest gripe with the bike. Now, if you look at Polygon's best-selling mountain bike, the Siskiyou series, it's a no-nonsense, well-designed, high-performing, highly specced bike for hundreds of dollars less than the competition. And so I think they could do something similar with the gravel line as well. Nonetheless, if you're shopping for an all-rounder type of gravel bike, that'll be fast enough for your fast dirt rides, but also give you some adventuring options and also give you the option to play around with the geometry a little bit, then the Tambora 
may be a good fit for you. And for more details on the bike, you can check the link down below. And for any questions on the bike, also feel free to leave them down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time.